So one of the big problems with having someone in your guard is the long arm. So anytime we're doing Tweete, what I recommend is from the guard position, you go through your list of possible ways to grab the wrist, whatever hand positions you're used to and that you like, and then add in the principle of keeping the arm bent. All right, so the, the biggest thing in guard is because of your hips keeping their, the body a little bit farther away from you, the arm tends to be long, straight. And when their arm is straight, it's not impossible to do wrist locks, but it's a lot harder to get the angle correct. And you can't use your hips to rotate to that rotation, rotating the wrist, like you can when you're standing. It's so much easier to do standing because you have the free movement. So what we've got to do is get their arm to bend. And the easiest way to do that is when I'm up in closed guard or whatever, I need to switch to a side hip position and put my leg over their arm, right? So as I'm trying to play this game and I finally get some sort of wrist lock, whatever it is, whether it's cross, or here, both hands, I need to bend that. And the way I do that is by throwing this leg over the arm that I'm attacking. Typically, depending on your flexibility and whatnot, you may have to, to post a foot and shrimp over and then come up, or you may be flexible enough to where you can do that without that motion, or you might be able to use their hip to kind of throw you over. But what I want to do is I want to get this bent. I don't want the straight arm. Uh, just lock your arm straight. It's not going to work. All right. If he's got that arm straight and I'm uh, hooked in here into a closed guard, all I've got to do is get here and now his arm is bent. And then I drive it towards him and it bends even more. Once I'm there, low leg comes out, and I'll probably push or push, and then I'm right to here. Again, I'm not going to try to get him out. I'm just going to continue with the wrist lock that I have. I'm going to seize, get to my knees, and that pressure of me getting to my knees is going to get him to his chest. And then I'm going to come in in this position, or I can... If I do this, that takes his elbow up. I've got the danger of him trying to roll face up. If he rolls face up, it's pretty easy to get him back as long as I keep the integrity of my principle of X. All right, so if, if this hand catches his forearm, then I can keep that pressure there and slide right on up and be into my cuffing position if I'm a law enforcement. I can be nice and tight. I have a shoulder lock, elbow lock, and now a wrist lock from this position. Let me do that from the other side so you get a little bit better perspective. So we're in here, we're playing this game, and whatever happens, I maybe push this hand across until I can catch it. That's our standing high five technique. This high five technique is one that I end up getting during ground practice quite a bit. But if his arm is straight, I'm never, unless I dislocate my shoulder, I'm never gonna get the angle I need to make that work. So I've gotta unlock, throw, I'm attacking his right arm, so this side has to come over to bend that arm. All right, so I'm going to squeeze and keep control and I can use this hand to push and then come over the top. From this point, this is a standard U position. Now my thumb needs to push his pinky that direction and you can see he wants to go. I'm somewhat trapped, so I need to get untrapped. Push through and I just throw my hips. This arm is trapping. I can come here, 
I've got them trapped. I can sit here, take a little nap, call, call my mom, see how she's doing, whatever. But if I push down on it and slide up, I can get them into this lock here. As long as I keep that pinky behind his ring finger, I've got control of him. All right, try to do your push up. Nope. Yeah. Not even that much. All I am doing right now is I've got a thumb pushing on there and I've prevented his escape by blocking his elbow. I'm a little over the top so he can't pull his elbow up and rotate it. If I completely let go here, this is blocking his elbow from coming up, right? And I can, oh, I can squeeze my knees together. I don't even have to have my hands. Uh, I don't like to take that risk in law enforcement. I like to keep control of that pinky over the ring finger, right? And then that allows me to come up and get him into a handcuff position. Hands behind the back, and I can handcuff, all right? On this note, I did a extension technique. Mm -hmm. Like we've done before, I may have come in and got into a flexion technique. Right? Anytime I get flexion, it's rare that their arm is straight. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit easier to get a bent arm, but these it's hard to get the angle right again. Mm -hmm. Right? It's just hard for me to get enough. I can't take it that way far enough to get him to want to come out of this, right? To get him to do the thing, to, to go away. I can't make him go away because I just don't have enough body rotation from this position to make it happen as long as my hips are flat against the ground. So I need to get rotated in order to make a flexion, fingers up, technique work. So, from here, I've already broken his balance, and I'm capturing, it's hard to see, this, my forearm is against that, and I'm starting that kind of roll motion, mm -hmm. right? I can switch to thumb down, and then all I have to do is knock on the door, and then, because I want him to roll anyway, I'll kick with this leg and roll him over, all right? So from that position, I've got the wrist lock. You can start adding in carotid and other nerves as well. Uh, and then there's several rollovers from that position or out of floor space would be going right into the wall. But I obviously could continue that rollover from there. So very important uh, that you trap and bend the arm whether you're doing flexion or extension. Mm -hmm.